Hello everybody, my name is Cap and welcome back to Cap Tech. Today I want to talk to you about data breaches. Now what is a data breach? A data breach is an incident in which sensitive, protected, or confidential data has potentially been viewed, stolen, or used by an individual unauthorized to do so. Meaning basically somebody gained access to your personal information in a manner in which they did not have authorization to. Each week I get updates and notifications anytime that there's a large data breach released to the public. And so I thought by doing a video on a weekly basis to let you guys know of the ones that were made public, this might help you in protecting against identity theft. Now, not all data breaches are as dramatic as they would make them out into the movies where they steal your identity immediately. Sometimes the only information they get is maybe just your IP address that you use to log in so they would know the general area in which you live, address, a phone number, stuff like that that you would store under a profile in a website. It's stuff that you don't necessarily want everybody to have access to, but it's not something that would automatically mean that your identity has been stolen. But with that being said, it is important to know when a data breach happens for a company or an entity in which you've done business with so that you can monitor to make sure that you didn't have any additional information stolen and that they're not trying to steal your identity with it. So this week, July 17th, 2016 through July 22nd, some of the data breach alerts that were made public are Ubuntu, which is owned by a company called Canonical. It's the firm that builds and develops Ubuntu, which is a popular Linux distribution, has said its forums were hacked, information compromised, including usernames, email addresses, and IP addresses associated with the Ubuntu forums. No active passwords were accessed. The date of the data breach was July 14th, 2016, and they made it public on July 15th. And they said there was an estimated 2 million records affected. The next one is from Digital Extremes, the company that makes the sci-fi shooter Warframe. It was targeted at an exploit that led to hackers getting their hands on more than 775,000 email addresses and usernames. Digital Extreme Extremes claims that information like passwords, home addresses, and credit card numbers were not compromised, though. The date of the breach for this one was November 2014, and the company made it public July 20th, 2016, and there were 775,749 records affected. The next up for this week was CeCe's Pizza. CC Pizza acknowledged that a credit card breach at more than 135 locations. A malicious software program had been introduced by a hacker to the point of service system, the credit card scanners, used by some of the locations, and compromised payment card information. This happened in March 2016 and was made public July 18, 2016. Now, right now, they don't know how many specific records were affected, but if in March 2016 you happen to eat at CC's Pizza, definitely check to see if you have any fraudulent purchases keep an eye on your credit card transactions or whatever card you use to do that. The next one released this week is Asiana Airlines. This was made public on July 18th, 2016, but they don't know specifically when the date of the breach happened. And there were a little over 47,000 records affected. And this one, they said sensitive passenger information has been leaked on the internet in a large scale private data breach against Korea's second biggest airline. Compromised information includes citizen resident numbers, passport information, home addresses, bank account details, phone numbers, family relation records, and any other information saved on the company's website. So it sounds like a pretty big breach. So if you have done any kind of business or traveling on Asiana Airlines, definitely check out your information and make sure that you haven't had any kind of fraudulent purchases there. The next one known is Ambulatory Surgery Center at St. Mary's. Uh, ransomware was installed on in the company's network in an attempt to prevent the center from accessing its files until it paid a ransom. A St. Mary's spokeswoman said the center had a full backup of the files, however, so it was able to restore them the same day without paying those responsible for the attack. This was made public on July 11th, 2016. The date of the breach wasn't listed, and there was a little over 13,000 records stolen. And the last one listed for this week was Providence Health and Services. Uh, an internal audit in May revealed a former employee may have inappropriately accessed the medical records of about 5,400 patients in Providence Health and Services in Oregon. Compromised information includes demographics, medical treatment information, insurance information, and social security numbers. There were about 5,400 records stolen from this one. It was made public on July 18, 2016, but they believe the date range of the data breach was between July 2012 and April 2016. So if you happen to be using their services, you live in Oregon and you have done business with Providence Health and Services during this time frame, definitely keep an eye on your information. Now you may yourself 
Why did it wait so long for these companies to release to the public that these kind of data breaches happened? Well, oftentimes it's because the company may or may not even know that they happened in the past. Sometimes it takes them going through and doing an internal audit or stuff like that before they realize data was even accessed there. Because it's not necessarily means that just because somebody accessed it, that they're immediately putting all the information out on the internet and demanding a huge ransom for it. Sometimes the information is compromised and nothing's ever done with it, and so they don't even know what happened. So as soon as they actually know how many records were affected, arranged, the information was there, then they by law have to come out and let everybody know, hey, this is what actually happened. So if you see a wide range in date between when it happened and when they released it, that may have been because they didn't even know what happens. That is one of the scary things about identity theft is that you can get the information from somebody from a company. They may not even know that it was released on accident, and it could be years before it even reaches the light of day. So as usual, my recommendation to you is if you use any of these sites here, definitely go in and change your passwords, change your email addresses, check your email addresses. I do recommend people change their passwords on sites that they frequent on a somewhat regular basis just to prevent stuff like this happening. Definitely don't use the same password for every possible site. All that does is makes it a much wider chance for somebody to gain access to all of your information. And just be vigilant about watching your information, watching your credit scores, making sure you don't have a bill show up for a credit card that you don't own, things of that nature. So hopefully this was beneficial to you guys. If you did find it useful, please do me a favor and hit the like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified anytime a new video goes up. Thank you guys for your time, and I will talk to you later.